grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's Christmas time, and that's good because Christmas is king in America. Uh, forget the, the 12 days of Christmas. We practically celebrate Christmas for 12 weeks. Uh, we love our Christmas decorations. It's a great excuse for cookies of all sorts, for hot chocolate, or maybe even hot toddies. I think we all enjoy getting gifts, special meal, special time with family and friends. And, of course, many people love listening to Christmas music. Christmas is king in America. However, the way we celebrate Christmas often demonstrates what is most important to us. For instance, uh, we might be tempted to go shopping for weeks, every, every week for gifts that we don't exactly need, but sometimes we can't seem to find time to receive the gifts that God gives to us in his word, in the Lord's Supper or Christian fellowship. We spend hundreds and maybe even thousands of dollars, but can't find time to spend a few minutes for those who dearly appreciate our attention. Christmas is king in America, but that's not always a good thing, because some things are more important than Christmas, namely, of course, Christ himself. And it's most important, most meaningful, that, uh, to teach and act in ways that reinforce that Christ is king, even above Christmas. Sometimes Christmas is obsession, unfortunately, with holiday pleasures. Perhaps the food, the drinks, the gifts, these things that are good on their own, but are not so good if they get in the way of seeing our Savior. Even the gifts we give sometimes teach kids or others around us that getting what you want is what's most important in life. Of course, I think we all know far more important than getting a really good Christmas gift is simply being there for others, teaching your children to, to deal with life, being with them, experiencing life with them, including not only gifts, but also disappointments and failures. I say all that because today, right now, the goal is not to celebrate Christmas. You can do that on your own time, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. But tonight, we are here especially to celebrate Christ, not simply a season or a feeling. And what's the difference? Well, Christmas comes in shiny wrapping, uh, usually involves a nicely decorated home, nice food, hopefully nice people who are typically nicely dressed. But if Mary and Joseph ate anything that first Christmas Eve, I bet it wasn't particularly nice. It was probably pretty basic. In place of tinsel and bows, they had straw and swaddling clothes. The only Christmas decorations on the walls where they stayed were the perhaps mostly brown contributions from the animals there. The nicely dressed people were all in the inns, but at least the shepherds in their work clothes came to that first Christmas party. Christ was born in the dead of night, born in a barn, usually an insult, with no baby shower or visiting relatives. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. Because we heard from the angels why Jesus had come. And it didn't matter where exactly he was born or how nice the decorations were. What mattered was a Savior has been born to save his people from their sins. To bring peace on earth to a world that is in love with war and bitterness. If we had a little more time and we could look further into this story and we could listen to the words of, that Mary sang uh, about what this son of hers would do, that Jesus would, for instance, scatter those who were proud in their hearts. Mary sang that her son would bring down rulers from their thrones, but lift up the humble. He would fill the hungry with good things, but send the rich away empty. Christmas Sometimes, at least 
in some ways feels like kind of the opposite of that. Our politicians and pop stars put out special messages and CDs, and everyone cheers those who have it all on. The rich might get any and every toy they want, but the poor go further and further into debt, trying to show their children love through gifts, even if they can't afford it. But we are here, and we remember that we're not here, and Christmas is not simply about celebrating toys. Rather, we celebrate Christ Jesus, who, co who came to condemn evil and yet save sinners. Uh, to use the words of Gabriel, Jesus came to save his people from their sins. And if your celebration of Christmas makes no mention of sin or saving, then you surely are not celebrating Christ, even if you are celebrating Christmas. Not all the tinsel and wrapping, food and gifts, or even nativity sets and Christmas songs can save. Only one can, and that's the Savior. And the good news is that he has been born, and he has come to save you and me, to forgive us of our sins and bring us life. Now, to be clear, I, I celebrate Christmas, and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with gifts or cookies. I like them too. Uh, family, generosity, and happiness, those are good things, and our world needs more of them. But we don't want to be a sellout. Don't let this culture or commercials or your own desires take the place of Christ or to take Christ out of Christmas. Because you know what's left when you take Christ out of Christmas? You only got three letters left, Moss. And Moss is something we're all pretty familiar with, I think. Those of you, you who habla espanol might know what Moss means. It's Spanish for more. And if you subtract Christ from Christmas, then Christmas is simply about Moss, about more. It's about more lights or more cookies, more presents, more friends, more stuff. And it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Except when all you want is mass or more, then whatever you have is never really enough. That's because this world and all the toys, all the presents, all the glitter in the world can't really satisfy. So all it can offer is more and more and more. One more drink, one more fling, one more gift or game, one more hit, one more dollar. But more and more usually leads to less and less. Less satisfaction, less fulfillment, less hope, less love. No matter how much stuff you buy, it won't last forever. Talk to those familiar with addiction and you'll learn that mass is not always better. But Christ is better. Christ endures and that's why we rejoice. He's not disposable, as Jerusalem Sanhedrin found out the hard way when they tried to kill him. Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. Jesus keeps on giving, namely, forgiveness. He keeps on giving us his word that helps us through life and leads us. He keeps on giving us peace that the world cannot give. Peace between God and man and peace even between enemies through the reconciling cross of our Savior. He keeps on giving. Of course, the only way to keep on receiving those gifts is to visit with Christ regularly, not only at Christmas. We do that in a variety of ways, primarily through hearing God's word, receiving the sacraments, devotions, Bible studies. We're connected to Christ when we repent, when we humbly take communion, when we have Christian fellowship. Uh, you often hear the logo or the, uh, the sentiment in Christian circles, keep Christ in Christmas. And that's, you know, that's all right. That's good as far as it goes. However, it would be far better to simply keep Christ in your life. And then whether or not the nativity sets are up in public spaces, it's really kind of immaterial. It's much more pivotal that you keep Christ in your life than that you celebrate him for one day and then that's about it. I know that I must repent. I 
have sometimes, some might argue often, have made Christmas about moss, more. More stuff, more programs, more of the things I like. Shoot, of course, it doesn't even need to be Christmas for me to get obsessed with more. Any and, well, every day, I'm tempted to make life about things, pleasures, experiences. However, life is not about pleasures. Life can only be really found in Christ. That's what we confess as Christians. Jesus alone can give life. And he keeps on giving it to us, even when we don't deserve it, even when we haven't lived up to our end of the bargain. And he will keep on offering it to us, and he'll continue to show us what is truly meaningful. He shows us, for instance, that our lives are not meant just to live for ourselves, but for others. He gives us life as he comes among us, born in a manger, blood shed upon a cross, shared with us in communion. Jesus will keep on giving us his life through his, his life, given up for us willingly on the cross. He will spread life through us as we follow him as his people. The life Christ gives us will continue to be offered weekly at church, as often as we allow it, in fact, to spread in our own lives as we follow Christ personally. And so as we get ready for communion in a few minutes, we receive another reminder to come and receive Christ's body and blood, which means his forgiveness, which he offers to us over and over and over. You see, what we really need is not Christ Moss or Christmas. What we need is the other way around. We need Moss Christ. What the world needs is more of our Lord more proclamation of God's coming kingdom, more of Christ's love shown in the cross, more of Christ working through you and me through a variety of acts of mercy, kindness, and service. Long after the Christmas gifts have been forgotten or broken, God's work through Christ will continue and endure. We don't need more Christmas, but we can give thanks for it. But what we really need and what God is longing to give us is more of Christ in our everyday lives. In Jesus' name, amen.